Hey everyone, so in my last few videos we've been talking about how the Gospels match up with historical facts outside of the Bible. So today, let me set a little bit of a scene for you. It might seem like we're veering way off track, but stick with me and you'll see how some stories in the Gospels connect with actual historical details. So in one of the most cringeworthy episodes of The Office, Diversity Day, Michael hands out cards with different ethnicities on them to the employees. They're supposed to guess their pretend ethnicity based on how their coworkers treat them. Pam and Dwight try to guess each other's race. Stanley is accidentally given black. While Dwight is Asian, but can't figure it out because no one mentions rice or compliments his people's food, Michael, who chose Martin Luther King Jr. for himself, tells Pam to spice things up. Pam reluctantly tells Dwight that his people aren't great drivers. Dwight snaps back, asking if she's implying that he's a woman. Kevin, who's got Italian, tries to help Angela guess that he's Jamaican by using words like mon and chatting about beaches. Things get awkward when he asks if they want to get high. It only gets worse from there, and the show is clearly pushing the limits, so much so that Comedy Central cut it from reruns. It's a bit ironic since making fun of Southerners is still considered okay on the same network. So how in the world does all of this relate to the Gospels? Well, it's no shocker that in the ancient world, they had their own sets of stereotypes and biases, just like we do today. One of them is shown in the Gospels, specifically the prejudice in Judea against folks from the northern region of Galilee. You can spot this regional bias in a few verses in John's Gospel and a bit in the Synoptics. When Philip tells Nathaniel that they found the Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth, Nathaniel scoffs. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? When people in Jerusalem are discussing Jesus, some of them say, the Christ isn't going to come from Galilee, is he? This might just mean that they think the Messiah should be born in Bethlehem, not knowing that Jesus actually was, even though he grew up in Galilee. They touch on this in the next verse, but the regional bias becomes obvious later in the chapter. See, the religious leaders, they're not happy when Nicodemus, one of their own, tries to mildly defend Jesus, suggesting that they should hear him out instead of just condemning him outright. Their reply reveals a clear regional bias. You're not from Galilee too, are you? Go check the scriptures. No prophet comes from Galilee. The first sentence drips with sarcasm as if to say, oh, are you one of those Galileans? The same bias comes up when Peter denies knowing Jesus. Those in the high priest's courtyard recognize Peter by his accent and peg him as one of Jesus' followers. You must be one of them. Your accent gives you away. The references in John can be hard to understand, without knowing the cultural context. We don't immediately get why people like Nathaniel look down on Galileans. All of this might make you wonder, what is the big deal with these Galileans? John doesn't bother to explain the Judean prejudice against Galileans, which might have seemed confusing to his audience in Asia Minor. However, we can back up the bias against Galileans with evidence from Talmudic sources. One passage in the Talmud pokes fun at the Galilean dialect, sharing likely exaggerated stories about foolish Galileans who can't express themselves clearly because of their funny accent. One story involves a woman complaining to a judge about a man who stole her wooden board, but because of her accent, it sounds like she's saying they stole the judge himself. In another story, a woman wanted to tell her friend, hey, come over and we'll have a glass of milk. But because of her unclear pronunciation, she ends up sounding like she's saying, hey, I hope a lioness eats you. These stories might be more funny to those who understand the language differences. In contrast, the passage notes that Judeans are clever with their speech. Another story involves a rabbi who lived around or just after the time of Jesus, and he mentions how the Galileans hate the law. What is the reason for his grumbling? Well, he lived in Galilee for years and supposedly only had two cases brought to him for him to adjudicate. This tale suggests that the Galileans weren't big on following the nuances of the Jewish law. All of this paints a very clear picture. To the Judeans, especially the more learned ones, the Galileans were seen as backwards country bumpkins. They had a funny accent. They didn't live in the cultural and religious heart of Jewish life and were seen as just hicks. Acts 4.13 likely reflects these attitudes. Peter and John boldly preach about Jesus, leaving the leaders astonished at their courage. They recognize the duo as untrained and note their Galilean accent, but also see that they had been with Jesus. Despite their hick way of speaking and lack of formal rabbinic training, 
They show confidence in what they stand for and aren't intimidated by the Jewish leaders. But who could have seamlessly woven these attitudes into the Gospels in verses in the book of Acts? From Nathaniel's calling to the sneers of Jerusalem leaders and Peter's denials, it's clear this prejudice fits naturally within the narrative. These little cultural details from outside sources back up the Gospels because the truth just clicks together. Remember, John's likely writing far away from Judea where people wouldn't get these subtle nods. All right, before we go, let's clear something up. Somebody inevitably in the comments is going to say, Eric, come on, this is a waste of time. This doesn't prove all the magical stuff you talk about in your favorite holy book. Hold up, though. That's not at all the point. First of all, the case is cumulative, so be sure to go back and watch the entire playlist. Secondly, you're missing some serious nuance here. These videos give us a peek into what kind of writers these authors were. Cautious, honest, and close up to the facts. I'm not at all just jumping to conclusions here. Just because they nail some mundane details all by itself doesn't mean that all the miracles happened. But here's what I am saying. The Gospels are likely grounded in witness accounts, so we should ask ourselves what those witnesses claimed, and if they were honestly mistaken or trying to pull a fast one. From the details we get, I don't see them as likely mistaken. And considering the risky context in which they share these details, it doesn't seem like they were just making stuff up either. Anyway, be sure to catch the rest of the playlist where I dive into how history outside of the Bible lines up with it, and hey, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more historical nuggets. Thanks for watching.